a moment of decision, a life in the balance, a confrontation with the past. These are the turning points, the times when our lives change forever, often for reasons we can never explain. These are the incredible stories you're about to see, stories that couldn't have happened but did. I'm Melissa Etheridge, and this is Beyond Chance. Tonight on Beyond Chance, Mary Jo was pregnant and feeling fine until she had an inexplicable urge to rush to the hospital. I would be devastated if I wouldn't have obeyed that because the consequences would have been death. It's been said that all of the doctors and child care books in the world can't take the place of a mother's intuition. But does that uncanny ability begin for a mother when her child is born or while it's still in the womb? Today, Mary Jo and Tim Hooker are the happy parents of three healthy children. But things might have been tragically different if Mary Jo hadn't followed a premonition she had while she was still pregnant with their third baby, Soraya. I would be devastated if I didn't, if I wouldn't have obeyed that, you know, because the consequences would have been death. Mary Jo was eight months into a healthy and uneventful pregnancy when an extraordinary feeling came over her. On the evening of March 12th, my husband and I were having dinner with the children, and um, I got an odd urgency to go to the hospital. I said, are you having contractions? Are you, are you, are you cramps, anything? What's wrong? And she said, no, I'm fine. It, it's, I just want to go to the hospital. I called the doctor. I never got a return call. Dr. Aaron Elkin was the obstetrician on call that night, but somehow he never received the message to call Mary Jo. As it turned out, it was a good thing he didn't. Most medical people who would listen to Mary Jo describing a bad feeling and describing that everything else is okay would probably tell the patient to stay at home and will probably not check the patient. But Mary Jo didn't stay home. Leaving Tim behind to watch the children, she drove herself to the hospital. Because she really had no physical symptoms whatsoever, she made a big decision. She would falsely tell the staff that she had noticed some vaginal bleeding so that they'd take her seriously and give her a thorough set of tests. Then, at the hospital, another twist of fate worked in Mary Jo's favor. The nurse did an internal exam, and she made a mistake and said that I was seven centimeters dilated. This time, the erroneous news that Mary Jo was bleeding and in labor did reach Dr. Elkin, who rushed to the hospital, only to be told when he got there that the nurse had made a mistake and all appeared to be well. Still, the doctor gave Mary Jo the examination she felt she needed. Even though on complete evaluation, including an ultrasound that showed no evidence of bleeding, it showed no evidence of any abnormalities of the baby, I had a gut feeling that something is unusual. Over the next hour, the doctor and Mary Jo watched her baby's heart rate fluctuate between 140 and 200 beats per minute. Although that kind of change isn't at all unusual, Dr. Elkin made a startling recommendation. Mary Jo felt that something is going on inside of her belly, and even though I cannot explain what is going on, there is something that is causing us to be worried, and we should probably at that time proceed with a delivery of a baby. When he spoke with me about it, I was like, let's go, let's do it. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm willing to risk the prematurity by only four weeks. Mary Jo called and said, they're going to have to take the baby tonight. Before she told me anything else, my words were, no, we're going to have this baby natural. I want this baby natural. And she said, Mary Jo said, no, you don't understand. They're going to take the baby tonight, so get up to the hospital. When Tim arrived at the hospital, the surgery was already in progress. But it was only when Dr. Elkin actually removed Mary Jo's baby from her uterus that its true critical condition became known. The finding during the cesarean section was that the baby has a true knot in the umbilical cord. A true knot is a rare and dangerous condition in which the umbilical cord has literally tied itself into a knot. This can ultimately choke off the supply of blood and oxygen to the unborn baby, causing brain damage and death. A true knot is usually associated with a stillbirth, and a true knot diagnosis is usually um, seen with a stillbirth. 
That's because, in spite of modern medical technology, a true knot cannot be seen by an ultrasound procedure, nor can it be detected by any external examinations. So how could Mary Jo have known that her unborn baby girl was in trouble? I've never really known mother's intuition before or that kind of instinct, you know, but I, I, I really give God, God the glory for, you know, speaking to my spirit and saying, go, you know, you need to go. Because Mary Jo listened to her intuition, Soraya was born just in time before the umbilical knot could do any damage. I believe that if we did not make those bold decisions based on instinct, the baby probably would not have been alive. But today, little Soraya is very much alive and a happy, healthy member of their family. She's such a joy to have in this house and with the other two children. She blesses us all. She's, she's a phenomenally wonderful baby. When I hold Soraya and look into her eyes and the joy that she has, I'm just overwhelmed with gratitude. You know, because she's a gift, and she's brought so much joy to our family. Now, Soraya has her whole life ahead of her, thanks to an open-minded doctor, a nurse who made a human error, a missed phone call, and most of all, a mother who listened to her heart. All those little things added up to one big miracle that named Soraya Bethany Jubilee Hawker.